This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together Short Bite Edition. Thanks so much for joining us. We normally talk about games, but today we're going to be talking a little bit about kind of curriculum materials, just a short bite on uh, a workbook that we've just finished, or I've finished with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is from the DK series. We've talked a lot about DK, you know, for spines. If you watch some of our YouTube videos, you'll see us recommending DK books all the time. Ariel has a love, Love long time love affair with DK eyewitness books. And we've collected, we've almost got the whole set. Well, you think that. I mean, there's a lot there, but there's, no, a, no, lot. there's a lot missing. We, we DK have, is my favorite is. Um, visual um, book company. They've mm-hmm. just got amazing reference books with just always, you know, just such engrossing pictures. Uh, but this is something a little bit different from DK. Yeah, and it's a workbook. It's around math. Um, and whenever I see the DK logo, I always say, okay, I'm at least going to take a look inside and, and give it a chance. And I think I believe I picked this book up at... Um, some one of the big box stores like a Target or a Walmart of that type of sort, and they always have those educational materials. You know, I love perusing those, especially for early learners. There's always so many workbooks and cool little workbooks that you can get mm-hmm. into, and and it's always nice to see like where your kid is, and you can kind of flip through them while they're waiting in the cart and squawking and you know playing with pencils or something like that. They, you can take a look at the the list, and this is one of the ones. This is the DK Math Made Easy for first grade. Um, and this is 10 minutes a day. This is specifically a timed thing. It's meant to be very short. It's meant to be very quick. And I would treat this more of like a review, um, almost like a series of tests that you can give to your your student. Um, some of the editions of this book you'll see sold with an actual digital timer. So there's actually this idea of completing it in 10 minutes. And basically, it's just two pages worth of work and maybe anywhere between seven to eight total problems. So it's not a lot of work. Um, The concepts are very easy. Um, They cover basically four large categories. The first one being um, the orange category. They have them kind of color coded, orange, yellow, green, and red. And then there's this special blue category. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But basically the orange category is anything place, you know, numbers, placeholding, um, addition, subtraction, things of that nature. Um, this is both horizontal and vertical addition. So you'll, you'll see those commonalities throughout all of the, you know, the problems that they show to you. Um, the next one is yellow. So this was only a couple, but this tends to be something that's measurement based. So the linear measurement, weight, time, you know, money, shopping, things of that nature, real world applications. Something that they also do in here that I really liked was, this kind of this green section was around shapes. So 2D shapes, 3D shapes, they kind of got into fractions of shapes. And I've noticed in the Right Start Math, they use a lot of shapes to begin to teach fractions. And so I saw that here as well. So that was a nice, you know, to see the commonality there. Next one is a a red section. Um, And this is heavily on graphing. Um, They really focused a lot on bar graphs, not necessarily like plotting on like an X, Y coordinate plane, but it's really just bar graphs counting up numbers, you know, finding out how many did Jimmy have or Johnny have or, you know, whatever, and then writing those numbers down. I, I, I enjoyed that. I, this was, we had done some bar graph stuff with Right Start Math, but I, I liked how they did this in here, which was very much like, um, you know, kids counting things. You know, she has to count things and then make the bar graph. She has to then interpret the bar graph back down into numbers. She has to tell the differences of those bar graphs. I'm seeing a little bit of that in our math mammoth curriculum as well. Um, Maria Miller likes to put in a lot of um, bar graphs to show differences. There's a lot of word problems that do that as well. And I saw that here in this book as well. So that was, it was a nice thing. Uh, as a special note, it does support the National Council of Teachers Math Standards, which is really nice. And I think online they, re- they reference that the various sections are common core aligned. So that, that if that's mm-hmm. important to you, you know, that, that's You're going to be entering school again, potentially. A- actually, absolutely. Want to keep uh, aligned with that. Absolutely. And then there's this blue section, which is, so they kind of cycle between all the colors. And the final one is the blue section. These are the timed uh, problems. And this is meant to be kind of a gamification of doing math problems. They can be very simple. And I think towards the end, they got a little bit more complicated. And basically, it's just this wall of problems, <laughs> like 30 problems. And it was the goal of your learner to sit down and almost like a game, how many can you do and how fast can you do it? And it's a lot of this idea of timing um, that if you have a learner who's not good with that, 
you don't have to do that. It's not a, not a hard requirement. And my learner gets a little bit of pressure anxiety when, when she's being timed to do problems. I've done it on some of the, we have these like princess books that we do addition and subtraction in. Um, it's just kind of filler, filler activities. And she gets a little nervous on it, but she likes it. So I, I didn't do the timed element here. So I just had her doing like, okay, just today we're just going to do the two columns. And sometimes I'm in mean, here, I'll show you one, Ariel. It's like, you know, there's a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm looking 30, at a page 60 here. problems, two pages across. Yeah. 60 problems across two pages. Now, that isn't something I, yeah, I would expect my six-year-old to just run through the whole thing. Um, and it is noted that I, I didn't start this book until towards the end of the first level of Right Start Math. And the reason why I picked this up was not because I, I wanted this to be a replacement for Right Start or anything of that matter. It was really me just starting to gauge where she was. And, and you know, I, I know there's a lot of like, there's always that thinking of like, okay, where is my kid kind of placing in the, in the school system? Mm -hmm. And, you know, where is she so I can understand how, you know, where we're progressing and, and where we need to go. And I always like to use these type of like, you know, evaluation books is kind of like, where, where are you? Do you understand these concepts? Is this something we're missing? You know, some, some points in here I found that we were lacking um, and I had to go back and double, you know, double down and, and do some more learning about that so then we could pick up the book. This book took me, gosh, about five months to finish and we didn't do it every single day. We didn't do it every single week. It was just something I pulled in periodically um, and we just moved through it slowly and I never really overdid it. It was always something as I used as a warm up as like a soft evaluation or a warm up based on what was doing what we were doing. Like for example, when we did those blue pages where there's like a bunch of problems, totally was not a lot of expectation. You know, I just wanted her to just do some problems and it was just a warm up. Some of the other ones were a little bit more conceptual based, so I had to do a little bit of teaching, kind of understanding. They had these cool like machine problems where numbers are put into the machine and there's outputs of the, you know, there's an output and based on what happens, you have to guess what's happening to the problem. And it's like, oh, they're adding five or they're adding 10. And it was a cool, I, I hadn't seen anything like that before, so that was kind of a cool thing. Um, the the activities never really re repeated because each section, each page is a whole new concept. So for example, I'll just run through a few of the ideas. Place value, to-do shapes, tables and graphs, beat the clock, which is one of those blue sections, subtraction, addition, telling time sequences, problem solving, shopping. So like, I think there was almost 30, let's see, yeah, probably 33 different chapters and they covered a different topic every single time. So the activities were never the same. So is this just activities or is this actually teach the topic as well? It doesn't really teach the topic. Right. So this um, would just be, this no. isn't a substitute for oh, any gosh, kind no. of main curriculum. This is just more practice. It's more a good practice. practice workbook. My other question is we've seen with some of these, you know, first grade, we've been doing a few different different workbook um, workbooks. They're assuming a level of reading which isn't consistent with first grade necessarily. <laughs> and that, so it kind of gets in the way of math, right? Because yeah. it's like, okay, well, I, I would really like to, you know, separate the the reading from the math where possible so that our daughter can, you know, go as far as she needs to in math without being hindered by the fact that she's only a early first grade reader. Yeah, I ran into that with the math mammoth curriculum. Yeah. Um, probably I think that was the last chapter we just did it was chapter three of the, of the first grade curriculum. So that would be the end of the first book. And in that section, they, they did a lot of like a larger number recognition. So like 23 or 62. And it wasn't just that you had to add six, 10 plus two. And that was what the wording was. And I had my learner reading that cause that's something she can do. Um, and then she would write the number and that was pretty easy to do. But then she had to write 62 and that is not something she can do right now unless she's referencing something. So like I had to, just not right. do that. Um, and the same thing here. Like I found I would have to read the problem a lot and just explain to her what 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 we have to do. Okay. There's no... So it still does rely on uh, some reading yeah, skills. So that's just, just a note for parents that this wouldn't be a completely independent workbook. No. Well, what I did like about it is a lot of times when they had a problem, say I said earlier, there's like six or seven or eight problems across the two pages. Um, there would be kind of like an A, B, C, and D problem within each pr main problem. So like, for example, if you, if it said, okay, take a number and add five to it. And it's like, 
you know, it's the number eight. And so, okay, the learner has to write 13. And then they'll have like one that was 15 and then 22 and then 36. And then you have to do each one of those problems. So there was a little hands off where I, I showed my learner how to do the first one. And I said, okay, now that you know how to do that, why don't you carry that forward and complete the next few? And that, that was something that we could do. And I could step back for 10 or 15 seconds, maybe a, a minute or two and allow her to do those problems quickly. And then, you know, you know, come back and say, okay, daddy, I'm done. Let's do the next problem. Um, another thing that I had uh, using as my bookmark here was a nice uh, 100. So a 100 uh, number chart. So mm -hmm. one to 10 and then so on all the way down. And I, I use that as kind of a crude number line so that when she got into sticky points, she'd always reference the the, 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 you know, basically the number grid from one to a hundred, because I didn't always have my abacus with me for her yeah. to use. So that was kind of like an alternative. So that was something I'd like to have on, on hand so that she could always reference it and always gave her kind of like a, not a crutch, but it was always something she could rely on if she got a little sticky or the problem got a little difficult or she didn't really understand what she was doing. She could always double back down and say, okay, I'm going back to my number line and that will help me through the, this problem. So all in all, I really liked it. So who is this for? This is for a family who's got a pretty good, um, I would say, math learner. So the, somebody who really enjoys math, likes to do workbooks. This is obviously... Or needs that extra practice, or, really. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily a practice book. There's some pages in here that are really good for practice. Other things are very... Con there are some conceptual... There are some conceptual ideas in there that, that maybe... Uh, needed some education along with it, but you're right. There, it is a practice book. You can use it for practice. Keep it on the side. It's not. It, I, I think the price on this thing was like eight or nine dollars. Yeah, or something. it's it's eight dollars, seven ninety nine in the U S. Yeah. Eight dollars, and it's about sixty five pages. So, yeah. I mean, when you consider cost versus quality, I I really like that it's full color. Yeah, it uh, and, and has engaging, cute illustrations. Yeah, and that's always something that gets our learner. Yeah, so if you're if you're going all year long and you you finish up your curriculum in in say May and you tend to take the summer off, you know this is a, something that maybe for a family who wants to, um, you know keep keep the education going lightly, um, this might be a good like summer, you know um, you know kind of hardening math concepts that maybe they've already learned or maybe it's a way to touch on things that maybe are coming up. Uh, you can teach your learner. So it's it's a cool thing to do in the summer, something when you're off season or it's something to send to grandma or grandpa say, hey, well, just, hey, grandma, do page 22 to 23. Um, and that's all you've got to do today. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Or you can use it just the way we did, which yeah. was in our morning basket. So use this was something basket. that our, we could read a bit to our daughter and then she would do, yeah. you know, most of the page independently for a lot of the pages after we kind of helped set up the initial yep. problem, um, just to give some extra practice from, we like to bring in different perspectives. You know, we, we do right start mm -hmm. as our primary. We have, then we, we did math mammoth to help just reinforce those concepts. And yep. we've done, like you said, we have these cheapy like princess books from the dollar <laughs> store hey, and we have this those one. Are, those are gold. I mean, that's that is like for one dollar right. you get like we'll, we'll be talking about those later well, that, that's another podcast but those are just fantastic i love those yeah i, I wish there were more um, because they are they're they're cheap they're fun uh they've got engaging characters so <laughs> it's kind of nice to hit math from a bunch of different angles and i think for eight dollars especially if you have a child who uh, is you know struggling with seeing math from one company this is a pretty cheap way to find out if if this style clicks with them mm -hmm. so uh, overall we liked it i think we'll be we'll be using the second grade version uh, again as just further math, yeah. math and, practice and when do it's time. and do note if you're out there looking at this book um, there are two versions there's the 10 minutes a day and then there's the math made easy and i don't know under i don't know the difference of them i'm, I'm assuming the 10 minutes a day is a more stripped down version the regular math made easy may be a little bit longer. And so do know that I, I've seen there's two different versions and then there's there's versions that are sold with and without um, the digital timer. Um, so do do note that if you want a, a little digital timer included, you can you can seek that one out. Otherwise I think I think the digital timer one was like five dollars more. So keep that in mind. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!